Statins, we're told, are drugs that lower cholesterol in the effort to lower heart disease risk. But is the case for this completely reliable? There was a study done in the early 80s with this bile acid binding molecule, cholesterol tyramine, showing that lowering cholesterol could improve cardiovascular outcomes. So it wasn't in the general population, it was just people who had an active cardiovascular disease diagnosis. And they just applied that to everyone in the population who had people who have marginally high cholesterol. Exactly. At the exact same time, you had all these statins being developed by Merck. In America, statins are the most commonly prescribed class of drug, and research appears to support this. The people on the statin will have better outcomes. They will be healthier, they will have less mortality, and they will have less cardiovascular points. They use this information to promote statins as positive. But what happens when we dig a little deeper into the detail? For is lowering cholesterol a scam? Part two. Today we're joined by neuroscientist and biochemical researcher, Dr. Dane Goodenow, who has built diagnostic prevention and treatment systems across a range of diseases, as we've previously covered on the show. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we learn how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. We have these drugs, including statins, that claim to lower the so-called bad LDL cholesterol. In a nutshell, how do they work? There's two main ways of lowering circulating LDL cholesterol. Both of those mechanisms involve increasing the absorption, okay, or the uptake of LDL cholesterol from the blood supply into the liver. And the way the liver gets LDL cholesterol is through a receptor called the LDL receptor. And so by increasing that receptor, more LDL cholesterol gets taken up into the liver and the cholesterol levels in the blood are lowered. HMG-CoA inhibitors, which were invented basically by Merck in the 80s, they work by blocking an enzyme in the liver called HMG-CoA. And by blocking that, it prevents the liver from making cholesterol or reduces, it reduces the ability of the liver to make cholesterol. That's a statin, is that right? That's a statin. Yeah. So statins reduce the ability of the liver to make cholesterol from scratch. And since it can't make cholesterol from scratch, so it doesn't donate as much LDL, but more importantly, it sucks more LDL out of the blood supply to make up the difference. The bile acid binding method by sequestering, by binding these bile acids and removing them in your poop, the liver is now forced to make more bile acid. In order to make more bile acid, it needs to make more cholesterol. So the bile acid binders actually increase cholesterol synthesis in your liver, but they also cause the liver to increase its reabsorption of LDL cholesterol from the blood supply. And so what happened was that there was a study done in the early 80s with this bile acid binding molecule, cholesterol tyramine, and it lowered atherosclerotic outcomes okay, in the trial, showing that lowering cholesterol could improve cardiovascular outcomes in people with active cardiovascular disease. So it wasn't in the general population, it was just people who had an active cardiovascular disease diagnosis. So they had clear, unambiguous atherosclerotic issues, and they're looking at complications and the progression of atherosclerosis in these individuals. And it showed that by using these bile acid binding molecules, that they lowered cholesterol, and the lowering of cholesterol was associated with better outcomes in these individuals. Well, the whole world just jumped all over this because conveniently, at the exact same time, you had all these statins being developed by Merck that in the research studies had very similar results. So this is how LDL lowering was established as a viable mechanism for reducing cardiovascular disease. And so they were taking this, they were extrapolating people with familial hypercholesterolemia to the general population without doing any of the large epidemiological research of all cause mortality or cardiovascular mortality. So if I, if I understand Dr. Goodenow, that they were looking at these people who had extremely high cholesterol in like an extreme cholesterol situation and found that their incidence of cardiac disease, cardiac events lowered with this medication 
and they they just applied that to everyone in the population who had people who have marginally high cholesterol. Exactly. For Is Lowering Cholesterol a Scam? Part 1, we learned how cholesterol, even higher than what is generally recommended, is actually linked to good health. And when you run that analysis for cholesterol, and this is done over 160 countries, like virtually every single time it's ever performed, it comes back with the optimal level of cholesterol for the people who have the lowest mortality, which means the highest survival, have total cholesterol between 220 and 240. When it has HDL levels of between 50 to 90 range and LDL cholesterol over 120. And so as you get below that, as LDL levels get below 100, and as total cholesterol levels get below 200, all cause mortality keeps going up. Okay, so now that's very interesting because that's in complete contrast to this world of cardiovascular disease, right? Which was basically saying, hey, this high cholesterol is linked to these negative outcomes. To watch Is Lowering Cholesterol a Scam Part 1 in full later, you can find the link in this video's description. So we've learned for one, having a certain level of cholesterol can be healthy, and for two, the original case for statins was made based on results from those with excessive cholesterol levels, who experienced some health benefit. If that's the case, what accounts for heart health benefits in the general population that appear to come from statins? What's going on with statins and atherosclerosis and this lowering of cholesterol? And why are we even talking about this? There's got to be some truth. Okay, we're not that stupid. Like, there's got to be some truth to all this going on. Well, it turns out that the oxidized LDL, and there's a molecule called C-reactive protein, and the best one is called high-sensitivity CRP. It's actually a very powerful marker for heart. It's basically called a heart marker for heart health. And it's a measure of oxidized LDL. And what's important is the molecule that's oxidized in oxidized LDL is not cholesterol. So it's not oxidized cholesterol, okay? That's not happening. It's a, cholesterol, like I said, is like titanium. It's almost impossible. Like we get to, 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 do to alter it almost. It's, oh. it's, it's un unalterable. It's, it's an incredibly stable molecule. And it's done that way because it's, it takes a lot of energy to make a cholesterol. Like I said, it makes 30 some steps, right? And your body just cycles it over and over and over again. It's very, very stable to any kind of oxidative stress. So oxidative stress does not alter cholesterol. Okay. Oxidative stress alters polyunsaturated fatty acids. So LDL itself can't get oxidized, but there are other components of the LDL particle right. that can get oxidized. Correct. Right. So then LDL can get oxidized and CRP, the C-reactive protein. And then back in the early 2000s, people were still really starting to realize that, you know what, it's actually not the LDL lowering that's associated with the better cardiovascular outcomes from statins or even the old bile acid binders. What, what's actually associated with the improved outcomes in atherosclerosis is this reduction in C-reactive protein. Okay, so the less, the lower heart attacks, the less, lower strokes, it's, it's due to the, the lower C-reactive proteins. It's not to do with the, yeah. the LDL in general. It's, it's it, exactly, it's actually linked to three things. Reduced oxidative stress, which is C-reactive protein, re lower levels of triglycerides. Okay, so some of these, these secondary side effects of statins, so statins will have a triglyceride lowering effect and they will also elevate HDL. Okay, so the three factors that contribute to better heart health, reduced outcomes in atherosclerosis are reduced CRP, reduced triglycerides, and elevated HDL. Okay, those are the three markers that actually correlate with and determine your cardiovascular risk. So you have this secondary effect of cholesterol, of statins, which is completely unrelated to its mechanism. So remember the LDL receptor gets upregulated and the sucking of cholesterol out of the blood supply will also suck. When you increase the recycling rate of LDL cholesterol, you're also recycling any kind of oxidized LDL that might be around there. So in the process. So that means that 
if you don't have oxidized LDL, then statins should have no benefit to you, right? Because the only benefit of the statins is removing some portion of the oxidized LDL. And that's 100% true. And so if you keep your CRP levels low, which is less than one, many, many ways of doing that, keep your triglycerides low, okay? And your cholesterol should be in a healthy range. There is no benefit whatsoever to having statins. So if you're a normal person and you have low cholesterol, for example, so you're just a normal, not taking statin and your cholesterol levels are 150 and you go to your doctor, your doctor's not going to give you a statin. Okay. So first of all, so statins are only given to people with pre-existing high cholesterol, what the industry calls high cholesterol, which is over 200. So by definition, only healthy people, I know this sounds very, very strange to say out loud, but by definition, only healthy people are prescribed statins because the healthy range of cholesterol is, is there, you can't make this up. So the healthy range of cholesterol is between 220 and 240. So it's only healthy people who are prescribed statins. Unhealthy people who have low cholesterol are not prescribed statins. So we take a look at all cause mortality and we, in epidemiological statistics, we call outcomes hazards ratios, for example, or relative risk ratio. And so 1.0 means no change. And with the relative risk goes above one, you mean you have an increased risk. So 1.2 means you have a 20% increased risk of a disease or an outcome. And 0.5, if it's less than one, means that you have a reduced risk of a particular outcome. Okay. And so what they'll do is, is they'll group people according to their cholesterol levels. Okay. They'll, they'll do them in quartiles, for example, each different 25%. If we do this analysis and we pick high cholesterol as the reference range, this is cholesterol in people over 240, okay, uh, or I can mean 220, or whatever, it's high cholesterol. And then we compare different ranges of people with lower and lower levels of cholesterol. With each subsequent lowering level of cholesterol, all cause mortality goes up. Okay, so it basically says that the higher the cholesterol level, your better your outcomes are. 